Over the past couple of days, we've seen uh, sort of the inquiry seem to shift. The focus, uh, in some ways, it seems to have shifted. The areas the police are looking at has changed. How has that been for you? I think it's an encouraging sign that um, you know that they're looking at all possibilities and being very thorough. And uh, it's an excellent example of collaboration between both the British and the Portuguese uh, police working together ultimately to try and solve the case of Madeleine and what's happened to her. Now yesterday you, you met the, the Portuguese police, didn't you? Um, there is an awful lot of information in, in the local media that seems to uh, talk about the, the, the quite detailed bits of the inquiry. Are you happy with the flow of information that you're getting from the Portuguese police? Yeah, I mean, we've got, we've got an excellent relationship with the Portuguese police and we meet frequently um, and the flow of information has been been great actually it's been very reassuring they, they very much know that you know we like frank information and it's much easier for us to deal with when we do that and uh, you know we were well aware that uh, these developments were going to happen we were informed informed in advance so um, but naturally you know this length of time uh, we are desperate to find Madeline that's a key thing did you for example know then this uh, discovery of what's thought to be blood in the apartment. Were you told of that? Can't comment on any specifics uh, in forensics, and we wouldn't do that. We would never, never, ever jeopardise the investigation. And I think it's critical for people to realise that, that we do uh, know some information, but one, we're not allowed to, to tell it, and two, we would never, ever put uh, anything uh, into the public domain that might put the investigation on Madeline at risk. And what about... Um, some of the broader points then in this investigation that are being released to, to the media or certainly being reported by the media, the idea that uh, part of this inquiry is now uh, shifting from a possible abduction to uh, an investigation that might involve uh, death or murder. How has that been for you? Were you aware of those sorts of shifts? We're well, not naive, uh, but on numerous occasions the Portuguese police uh, have assured us that they were looking for Madeleine alive and not, uh, you know, Madeline being murdered. And I don't know of any information that's changed that. Of course, uh, the information and the way the investigation's going is, is about thoroughness and, uh, and making sure that everyone is as confident of, as possible that that is the case. Um, Kate and I strongly believe that Madeline was alive uh, when she was taken from the apartment. Obviously, what we don't know is what happened to her afterwards, who's taken her and what her motive is, and we're desperate to find that out. And as Jerry's just said there, even last week when we met with the police, they said we are looking for a living child, and they've said that a lot, so... Yeah. Now, the nature of these searches have actually involved yourself. Your car, I believe, is actually still being, being looked at by detectives. How has that been? Well, of course... Um, it's difficult, but we expect the same thoroughness and to be treated the same way as anyone else who has been in and around this, and we wouldn't expect it any other way. The same high levels will be applied to us as we apply to anyone else, and that's only right and proper. And, of course, we are more than happy to cooperate with the police, and we have done uh, at every opportunity from the minute we discover Madeline missing and the police were called very early on... Um, and uh, we alerted them all, you know, almost immediately. Uh, and we will work with them and continue to work with them to try and get the breakthrough, which we hope and pray for every single day, that today will be the day that Madeline will be found. That's an interview with the family of Madeleine McCann, of course, Jerry and Kate. Come to know those two faces very well indeed, haven't we, over the last 100 days or so. They uh, refused to comment on specifics in the case, but you can see from the reaction that, Kate, it really is just an incredibly difficult time for both of them as that 100-day mark does um, hover around. We're just, I think, on the 96th day now since she disappeared in the apartment. Let's speak now to Mark Williams-Thomas, a former child protection expert who's been following the case closely. Oh, so much to talk about, Mark. What about that blood on the wall? Well, it's incredible, isn't it? I mean, I, you know, 
having seen what's developed over the last few days, Saturday we had Robert Murat's address being searched. Clearly that had been led by the British review team that had come in and said, look, you need to do one or the other. You need to either charge him with evidence or you need to eliminate him. And then we have yesterday possible finding of blood in the apartment. I mean, what it does... We to must underline it's not necessarily hers, no, but it's... there was a blood speck on the wall yeah. and it was found by a British sniffer dog? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think the problem with all of this, and you know yourself having gone out there, is there's so much speculation going on and this is as a result of very little information coming from the police. In the UK, the police would have a media strategy and they'd be saying, right, we'll release this certain amount of information because it stops speculation, whereas we don't get that with the Portuguese police. Whatever the blood is in the apartment and whoever it belongs to, whether it belongs to Madeline, whether it belongs to somebody else, this should have been found within the first couple of days, it should have been eliminated. Certainly if it doesn't belong to Madeline, eliminated who that blood belongs to and enable them to get on with the rest of the inquiry. What we are now is three months on, blood being found in an apartment, total and utter cross-contamination of who that possible blood belongs to and almost starting again. Something that struck me uh, about the DNA test that they're doing um, on the glass in, in Belgium, where would they have had DNA um, tests from, from Madeleine previously? How would they make that comparison, whether it was well, or not? They would have analysed what was in the apartment. For example, if she's had a hair brushed, um, you could get five strand fibres from hair and you could get DNA analysis from that. And then you can check the DNA from that across Jerry and Kate. So there's a lot of material that they could have got to check that that material, and, and indeed they can get DNA from the, the natural parents to check to see if that's DNA from, from Madeline. So the, the DNA would have there, and I would hope that they would have secured that DNA to be able to check to see if it's hers. Um, but, you know, it's very difficult to guess what the Portuguese police have done. It's a, um, we're talking about Robert Murat and his car being um, analysed and then, of course, his house being searched and all that digging going on. Um, so there was some speculation, oh, they're digging up his, his garden, but, but, but your view is that perhaps it wasn't done quite as it should have been the first time. No, I think we can see that, you know, having gone out to the apartments and seen actually the apartment that Madeline was from, they missed an incredible amount at those stages. They didn't check the, to see, well, they didn't take everything out of the apartment. I would have expected to see the shutters taken away. I'd have expected them to be in a good week doing proper close forensic analysis. That didn't take place. We didn't see the fingertips searching outside, and again, that could have led to a lot of evidence being found and then we go to Morat's address which was searched some 10 or 11 days afterwards and that was done very quickly within a day they were in and out they were searching cars within a, within the address they didn't take cars away there's certain forensic analysis you cannot do in an open environment you need to do it in a laboratory environment um, and clearly that didn't take place and I think what's happened is a British police have come in and reviewed and said go back to the scene go uh, as far as Murat's address goes and go and eliminate it go and find out if there's any evidence there at all and then last night to see Mrs Murat driving her car to the police station if the police wanted that car because it potentially has evidence they got it should have gone and seized the car you say police um, from Britain now involved. Do you think they would have been... How would, how would that have happened? What would have happened? Well, the British police have been involved from day one. Leicestershire police, uh, very early on in a couple of days after the inquiry, uh, were the nominated police force to take the lead in relation to all Madeline inquiries. Uh, and they have, and they've been very closely involved from, as I say, from the very early stages. The Portuguese police have been quite reluctant to allow them in to do an awful lot of work for them, or whilst that assistance has been offered. It's clear now that they have asked for that assistance to come in. In, um, and the reviews taking place. Senior investigating officers from the British police, and sadly, they've had a lot of experience in recent cases to deal with this. They pull the information together. There's a great amount of resources now, and now they're lending that to the Portuguese police. 